following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. Thank you for joining us again on the fourth episode of Mindfulness in Modern Times. And we are yet again in discussion with Greg Jacobson, Hi. who is the author of the number best-selling uh, book, Think Yourself Happy. And also he's a great mentor of happiness, I would say. And he's been with us for the previous three weeks and he has been giving us very good intents of how to become happy. Greg, thank you again for joining me on the show this I'm week. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Okay, to start off this discussion, now last week also we spoke about how we can improve ourselves in making decisions, how we can cope up with our frustrations and somehow get through this phase of unhappiness. But it's not easy as you say it is. And what does it take to be happy? I think that's a great question. So be happy. People always say be happy. If you knew how to be happy, you would be happy, right? It's more like do happy. You have to do things that make you happy, and once you do those enough times, then you say, I'm happy. But happiness is in the moment. So the way that people become happy, you can be happy at work, for example. It's called flow. When you're doing things that you're great at, and you're in them, and your time is flying, and you're saying, I'm getting this done, I'm awesome at this, that's being happy. That is a moment of being happy. If you can help somebody else, make them smile, make their life a little better, that's being happy. If you're accomplishing a task, if you've actually finished a task, you feel like, oh man, that feels so great, that's happy. If you're just making progress in a way, that's being happy. There's so many different ways to be happy that why wouldn't you just choose to do all of them all the time? And I don't mean you can't do everything simultaneously, but if you're at work, get into flow, just get into the work. Don't get into the politics of who's doing this or who's doing that or who's not doing their job. Don't focus on what others are doing. Get in, put your head down, feel good about what you're doing and enjoy the process. Enjoying the process is really what it's about because people think that happy comes later, but it's happily achieving. When you are achieving, you're happy. So all of that works together to make your life better and better and better. And it does take practice. I'm not saying that you become a totally new person overnight. You do one small thing and over time it has huge, significant results that will work for you. See, life doesn't happen to us, it happens for us. And I think that people get caught up in, they have an idea of the way that the next moment should be or what tomorrow should bring. And that's ridiculous. Life happens and we get to choose what it means to us. So if it doesn't happen exactly the way that we would have liked it to, maybe it just wasn't supposed to happen that way. And that's okay. And if you realize being rich, that is R-I-C-H, realizing I create happiness, that's really the key to it all. I think people think that externally, if we get something that's gonna make us happy, but that's just pleasure, and that doesn't last very long. Something called the hedonic treadmill, which it means the more that we get, the more that we need to get to continue that happiness. So it's, it's like shopping. You do, if you don't shop very often, and you go shopping, and you get this endorphin rush, and you feel great. I bought something for myself. It's new, it's shiny, and then that thing gets old. And then you gotta go shopping some more. And then you gotta shop all the time and all the time. And some people have a hole in their heart or their soul that they feel like they can fill with things. And then they just collect things and collect things and they realize things don't make you happy. Moments make you happy. And you get to create your own moments. That's the beauty of it all. But Greg, when you're telling people to do what makes them happy, I think we have to be very careful because some people don't know exactly what happiness is all about. And they might think even, you know, getting addicted to drugs or having a cigarette or having drinks, that could make them happy. I don't think that anybody believes that being addicted to drugs makes you happy or being an alcoholic makes you happy. Yes. That's they know in their heart of hearts. If they think if I have a drink right now, that might make me a little looser and maybe I'll smile and laugh a little, and maybe it will. But if you find yourself drinking every day and chasing that feeling, that's not happiness. As a matter of fact, that's unhappiness. 
we know that. I think we know that deep down, and even on the surface, we know that. So I don't think anybody's going to mistake that, oh, I want money right now, so I'm going to go rob someone or steal from someone, and that's okay, and that's going to make me happy. That's not going to make you happy, because integrity makes you happy. Integrity meaning that what you think, what you do, and what you say are all in alignment. So if you are a person that's honest, you need to be honest all of the time. You can't say, oh, I'm going to steal from somebody or from a store or something and that's going to be okay. You know in your heart that that's not the right thing to do and that will make you unhappy because you're not in alignment with yourself. All right. And another thing, a major reason why people are unhappy, I feel, is that there's this unnecessary worry in them. People worry about different things a they lot do. of times. They do. And, and there's and not one moment where I feel that people are not worried about anything. It's so easy to do, and I'll tell you why. We are programmed with one thing, and that thing is save the organism. Us. Keep us alive. That's all that we're programmed to do. And that doesn't necessarily work for us. Sometimes it works against us. So we won't, we won't even try things because we think that it'll make us unhappy. And the unconscious self says, well, don't do that because you might be unhappy. And if you're unhappy, then maybe you'll die or you won't be loved and you'll shrivel up and become this, this shell of a thing. But that, that's not really it. If you have positive anticipation, if you look forward to something in the future, something that's happening, let's say you're going to take an exam, for example, or you're, you're going for a raise at work for a new position. Now you can either think about, oh, this isn't going to work out for me. There's so many people that are much more qualified than me. I'm not good looking enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not experienced enough. And you can worry about those things that will never happen. Oh, they're going to laugh at me in the interview, they're going to realize that I'm a fraud, or whatever you're thinking inside that's a worry. Or you could say, I'm totally up for this. I'm going to crush this interview. I'm going to get this job. And you can be excited about the future. The future hasn't happened yet. And as I said on an earlier episode, there really is no future. It's all right now. So when you wake up tomorrow or next week, it's still today. So be excited about the moment that we have right now because tomorrow isn't promised to any of us. And if we're worrying about what might happen in the future, thinking and living the worst case scenario, we're thinking in our head and feeling in our body all these terrible things, we get to choose, truly get to choose how we feel about what's coming up. And that is the joy in life, is feeling good about what's coming not thinking about what might happen in a negative way, but if you're gonna, since we don't have a future anyway, we can't predict what's going to happen, why not choose to feel good about what's possibly gonna happen? But don't you think that people worry so that they can be careful of what might happen? I think positive anticipation puts you in the right frame of mind so you can make the right decisions. I think that if you worry, you might make poor decisions, much more poor decisions than if you're thinking it's going to work out. I'm not saying, hey, stand in front of a train and think to yourself, this train's going to stop, because that's unrealistic. What I'm thinking and what I'm t sharing with people is look at things the way they are in life. What they are is th they're not good, they're not bad, they just are. But you get to choose how you feel about them. So many people live either in pain of the past or fear of the future, and neither matters right now. And also, they look at things, instead of how they are, they look at things of how they would like them to be, or how they feel that they should be. And none of those exist in reality. Only what's happening right now is, is what it is. And I don't really like that saying, but it's true. It's, it's not negative, it's not positive, and we won't know if it's negative or positive until later. So let's choose to believe that everything that happens in life happens to our benefit. Then some things we don't like and we wish didn't happen, but later on we realize it's the best thing that ever happened to us. All right, great. Quite and often. Yeah, that's true. And the major worries I feel that people are scared about is scarcity and abundance. What can you say about that? I don't think people worry about abundance, but they certainly worry about scarcity. I think people believe that if they have something and they give it away, then they don't have it anymore. And it really, I don't know why it doesn't work that way, but it doesn't work that way. The more you give, the more you receive. And you don't give to receive, but when you give, you do receive. And it may not be 
a, a, an exact trade. I give you this and you give me that. But maybe I do something for you that's kind uh, or helpful and I receive from another area in life that blesses me. I think the more you give to people, the more you become blessed. And this, this is proven every day and people say, well, it, it's not true because I, I'm so worried about money. They, they come to the end of the month and they don't have money and they think to themselves, okay, and they, they start to worry. And what does worry do? It brings in this thought of, okay, I'm not good enough. Okay, I'm gonna lose my house. Uh, they're gonna shut off my power, which shuts off anyway. And the, my, my family's not gonna love me. That's not true, your family's gonna love you anyway. Be the best person that you could be and do everything that you can to make these things happen pay your rent, you work as hard as you can, maybe you have to sell something or borrow something or whatever. But how many times have we been at the end of the month thinking there's no way that we're gonna pay these bills and every single time they get paid? For as long as you can remember, if you're paying for your own bills, you've had some close calls. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but somehow you pull it off. Somebody pays a debt that they owe you or you work some overtime or something happens but as long as you don't quit, as long as you don't give up, and that's the key, is you keep fighting and you do all that you can to make it happen, and then the universe gives you that boost right at the end. Because I know I've done this, I'm, I'm in my 50s, and this has happened since I was 17, 16 years old, where I was out on my own, I didn't know how I was gonna pay my bills, but as long as you're doing the right thing, and you're not taking advantage of anybody, and you're working as hard as you can, the universe really does come and give you that boost at the end. Have you ever had that happen to you? Yeah, it has. Yeah, it happens to everyone. So if it happens to everyone, every time, it can't be a coincidence, and it can't be scarcity. It has to be abundance. So it has something to do with luck as well? I think you create your own luck by doing the right things. I think that people who steal and manipulate and take advantage of people and complain and blame and have excuses, their luck just seems to be bad, doesn't it? Do you notice that people who have bad luck continue to have bad luck? And there's people that you know that they seem to win and at everything they do because they do the right things. They show how people how much they care, they try as hard as they can and they don't give up. And those are really the keys to the kingdom. If you just understand that, again, the world works for you, not against you, and that you do the best you can, and you try hard, and you're honest, and you are genuinely kind with and generous with compliments, I think that uh, you'll see that things will get better and better and better. And I'm not saying be disingenuous or uh, dishonest in any way. I don't believe in that. but. Now, I told you today, you look great, I love your hair like that. But I could think it, or I could share it with you. And if I share it with you, it makes you feel good, so why wouldn't you share positive things with people all around you, even strangers? You can look at someone and know that they're looking good today, they're, they're feeling good today, and you compliment them and it makes them feel even better. Or you smile at someone, so many people go around with frowns, you know? Just smile at someone, they'll smi smile back, it's contagious. If you do good things, that's contagious. If you do bad things, that's contagious. So you want to surround yourself with people who are like-minded and reject negativity. Be as positive as you can. I'm not saying that you look outside and see rain clouds and say it's not going to rain, it's not going to rain. Just grab an umbrella. It's no big deal. And just enjoy all that you can as much as you can because we're here for a very short period of time. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for all those remarks. I think all our viewers there needs to hear this right now. So. They really need to implement, though. They need to say, I know they're saying, oh, yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense, but do something about it. Truly do something about it. And uh, the small changes over time, big results. So start now, and you'll see that, that these things really work. They really, really do. Let me hold that thought on that, Greg, and let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon.
Welcome back to Mindfulness in Modern Times and we are in discussion with Greg and Greg unfortunately we have a very few minutes left on the show as well to end this episode I want to ask you you're a very happy guy but but I know that you're not always happy but then you train yourself to be happy you have to make up your mind in order to make uh, yourself happy and people want to be happy right now and they just don't know how to do it because well, now they know they know they've got to take these skills and these strategies and put them into action right now and I think people in their heart of hearts know that these work but they just don't implement them and none of this I would say is earth-shattering news maybe they're looking at it in a different perspective that that resonates with them but I think that being uh, mindful and having gratitude and using perspective and changing the meaning of what you think something might mean to a meaning that's beneficial for you rather than negative for you I don't think those are things that people implement every day and if you take these things and put them into action you'll get the results if you do the things that you've always done you'll get the same results you've always received. That's you true. have to take new actions in order to get new results that benefit you. So I'm imploring the, the viewers to please take action on these right now. Use them every day, improve and improve and improve and share these simple strategies with your kids because kids are having such a hard time these days, especially teenagers, there's so much pressure and for us, the things that they're going through, they seem so minute and minuscule, but for them, they're monstrous. They're really looming over them. So if you teach them these strategies and they implement these strategies, you're gonna have happier kids. And what could be more valuable than having a happy family? That's true. And also, Greg, in your book, I think you have mentioned five steps in order to think yourself happy. Uh, before we end the show, why don't you tell our audiences like a few tips on how to train your brain and how to train yourself to be happy. Okay, I would say the first is visualization. Figure out what you want in life. Focus on what you're going for. Focus on the end result, what you would like to happen, how you would like to feel, and then take the actions and use the strategies that we've gone over in the last four weeks to make these happen in your life. You see, you're the captain of your own ship. You're not just there against these, the winds and the rain and the tide and you're, you've got your hand on the wheel. You need to steer in the direction that you wanna go. Otherwise, you're just a passive observer in your life and life is going to happen to you instead of for you. But if you take the moments and the actions to truly go where you wanna go, you will get what you wanna get. You have to take these actions and in life, I think another thing that's really important is it's not really what you say to people, it's how you make them feel. So do your best to be kind to other people and to be loving to other people. Be open to giving and receiving love without asking for anything in exchange. If you wanna do something for someone, do it because it's in your heart to do it, not because you're gonna get something from it. Those are such important strategies that I, I really can't emphasize enough. Another one is positive anticipation. I think we discussed this. It's, it's in place of fear. See, when you do the right thing, it, there's lag time to get the result that you're looking for. And in the meantime, if you have positive anticipation and you're looking at things working out for you, it eliminates the fear and it eliminates the stress and it eliminates the things that you don't want in between. They say that the waiting is the hardest part. It could be the most amazing part. And then again, gratitude strategies as much as you can be grateful for all that you have in life because we're truly grateful especially here in Sri Lanka I've been to 90 countries and this is one of the best places in the world and I don't think that the people who live here truly understand how magnificent it is the people the environment the place I mean of course there's always things that can improve but this is a beautiful place and beautiful people and a beautiful time in history so I think that if you grab on to that and you say to yourself, what can I do today to move me closer to the direction that I want to go? I think that, that you'll find that you'll, the answers will come to you. That's amazing, Greg. But I think this thing which you informed our viewers about, the actions that they need to take, all of us, we have to put it into action in order to 
be happy in life, I would say, because all of these things people have heard from somewhere, not just you, but I'm pretty sure they listen to motivational videos or become spiritual sure. or meditate in uh, trying to make themselves happy, but they just give up at some point because it doesn't work. But I feel after this program, you gave us a lot of important tips and tools in order to grow within yourself and be, uh, become happy. And again, Greg, thank you very much for taking the time to join me it's on my the pleasure. show. It's my pleasure. Hopefully, we'll be able to have more episodes with you in the future as well. I have lots more to share. Of course, of course. Again, thank you, Greg, for joining me on our last episode on Mindfulness in Modern Times. Thank you so much. Thank you. And for our viewers, I hope that the discussion with Greg helped you all in some way or the other. Now it's time for us to take action in order to make our lives better in some way or the other. And I'm Suzanne Shanali. I hope you all have a very good life and stay safe and stay happy. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Good night. Mm -hmm.